Kerma Weeks here with a Kerma Cam visit to Jerry Yagan's Military Aviation Museum up in Virginia. And it was a little bit of a side trip that uh, my friend here, Austin the Ostrich, and I made on the way up to uh, promote uh, national unity in Washington, D.C. It was during the presidential campaign. And even my little ostrich friend here knows that if you have a left wing and a right wing, it takes two wings to fly. Anyway, hope you enjoy the visit to Jerry's Museum. Yeah, so here we are cruising along, heading uh, heading down to Jerry's place. Uh, anyway, we're going to go down and see some airplanes flying. Austin's all excited. Anyway, we'll see. Anyway, so Jerry uh, got a little bit of influence here from Fantasy of Flight. I'll wake Austin up later. He's taking a nap. Um, I have no idea what to expect. We got a few airplanes out. Fuck wolf. FM2, got some World War One replicas out. Backs of the hangars. I don't know where to park it. I think Jerry's office is way down here. Water tower was influenced by Fantasy Flight. I'll explain all that in a bit. Right, I got the Infers 52 out. I think that would be the old CAF airplane. Couple of other things, and they are lining us in. We shall see. Man, I feel like a tourist. I'm like a tourist. Okay, Austin, wake up. Time to wake up. Time to wake up. Okay, all right, cool. Let's go see Jerry. Okay, so here we are hanging out at the Military Aviation Museum. Uh, kind of look at some of the airplanes here. This is uh, kind of a modified BT-15. It was a dive bomber for a Tor Tor Tora. I got three Japanese airplanes out of Tall Mance. I had the, uh, the Val, the dive bomber, the uh, Kate, the uh, torpedo bomber, and one of the Zeros that was a T-6. So anyway, Jerry's got a nice uh, airfield here, the wind's right down the runway, nice grass strip. He actually came down to my place a long time ago and uh, he was thinking about building this and he came down literally, I gave him a set of our drawings, our three views. Gave him a set of our three views and then uh, he took it back and guess what he came up with? <laughs> Does that look a little bit like Fantasy of Flight or what? So, Anyway, so Jerry, uh, including the water tower, so anyway, Austin uh, wanted to see some airplanes, so we stopped by to see Jerry, see what he was up to. Okay, so we got the JE-52 back there, looks like we got a 109, I'm not sure if that's a, kind of a two Bouchon other thing, and anyway, so we got a Hurricane, we got a Spit, P-40, Wild Mosquito, a couple of World War I airplanes, Jerry's coming in on the Stearman, so I got to get out of the way. Anyway, you see the uh, resemblance to Fantasy of Flight here, including the tower. Alright, showing some Austin awesome, some airplanes, the L5. I had one at one time from the Tall Man's Collection. It was the one that was used in the movie, I think Catch-22, where they dove down, uh, chopped a guy in half off the water thing or whatever. Anyway, he, uh, I gave it to one of my mechanics that had been great for me. MiG-3, that's kind of cool. I don't know if that flies or not, but it's certainly an interesting looking airplane. P-63. Got one of those. Looks like the engine's out like mine. Allison. This is an I-15. This, the fixed gear job. And it's got an A and two engine in it, and they just basically took the four bladed prop and made a two bladed out of it. I sixteen, same deal except with the spinner hides the the deal. Anyway, I'd love to end up with some. And when the guys were selling the ones out in New Zealand, um, I looked at them, but I just wasn't in a position to do anything. Pretty cool.
25 looks like some wild cargo to me <laughs> watch yourself a lot Austin cool it's like a J I guess anyway Avro 504 up there looks like it's got a 110 Lerone in it might be a static uh, I think those are the ones they're making from scratch out of Argentina Jerry's got it no, that's not a P64 that's a pseudo P6 P64 Ooh, that's cool P26 P shooter with a matching hat <laughs> no sweat <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 it's great. I think the guys uh, like around Louisville, Kentucky, I think redid this. That's awesome. I don't know how much they fly it. I'd love to see them fly it. Love to get one one day. There was a, uh, you know, the Ed Maloney one came out of Panama City, and uh, allegedly there was a second one down there, but I'm sure it probably hit the scrapyard by now. Pretty cool. Lavachkin LA-9, this was the one that uh, the guys had down uh, did uh, in New Zealand. This thing goes like stink, oh my god. I've actually got a, uh, an LA-11 project, but it's pretty uh, incomplete. It was used as, a, I think, a wind machine or something down in, uh, uh, in China or something. I don't think they've been flying this here recently. Um, Here's a retractable gear one, uh, one I-153, again the same A and 2 engine and prop combination. Yeah, that was a picture down in New Zealand. Anyway, pretty cool. Oh, share the moment, post pictures for free. Oh wow, that's a good looking couple. <laughs> okay, checking it out. Kind of dark, I'm sure, but uh, anyway, cool. Okay, so we got a Yak 3. Ooh, it's got an Allison in it because it's got a downdraft carburetor. Austin's checking that out. We got a uh, PO2 over here. I don't know if Jerry flies this much. Looks like they do. Anyway, there's, to my knowledge, there's only three in the United States. Jerry's got one, I got one, and Paul Allen's got one. Yeah, it looks like we got a 109. I think he said they've flown it, but they're still tinkering around with some uh, different issues with it or something. Anyway, maybe when he lands, I can get inside and take a peek. Aka Hurricane, pretty cool. Spit looks like a Mark 9. P40 looks like an E. Short tail one, the ends are longer. Jerry flew this down one time to my place. Looks like they're getting ready to fly it or they're loading it up with beer. That's the mosquito from uh, the Auckland guys. Freaking this thing is a piece of art. I mean, it's other than the components, it's a, pretty much a scratch build as far as the wood goes. But uh, oh my God, they did a freaking awesome job. It is beautiful. Kudos to those guys. We get ours going at some point, but everybody's got this one to watch. If they want to see it, see one fly, come here. Gun nose, pretty cool. A bit cleaner than ours. When the landing gear is down, it's like hanging all your dirty laundry out and there's so much freaking drag. And it takes so long for the gear to come up and down. Replica triplane with a, looks like a Warner. 
currently got one of those now. Looks like another one with, I don't know, it might be a 220 Continental. I don't know. Anyway, a little bit short on the gear. Um, anyway, I don't know what the deal is on the faults. I think it's a, uh, it's a faults uh, impression of a World War I fighter. <laughs> so it's got an inverted Ranger in it. Anyway, enough of that. UPF-7. Experiment Jerry was flying. Okay, checking out a, uh, I'm assuming this is an FM-2. Yeah. Got a folding wing. The F-4Fs, the early ones, did not. This is a great little airplane. Curtis Electric Prop. And, hey, so we got a kind of a pseudo 190 here. Um, might have the, uh, I don't know, Ash something engine in it. I think it's what the guys were using. They're like off TU2s. Prompt. The uh, original 190's got a big freaking oil cooler right there. So that's the easy way to tell. Anyway, it's cool. They look good, but it's a replica. Okay, checking out a D7. Cool. Got a tailwheel. It's got lozenge fabric on it. Not sure what engine that is, but uh, probably a Ranger. Anyway, some, of a, some pseudo machine guns. T28. Never flown one, never will. I've always considered that the North American Tri-Pacers. Just don't let your friends know you've flown one. PBY. Cool. I think, I think this might have come out of England. I'm not sure. Anyway, I got a chance to do about six splashes in one. Pretty cool airplane. It's got a kind of an interesting, you got to land it just right. Little PT-19 back there. TBM. Oh my God, this thing. It looks so intimidating. It is the easiest warbird to fly, bar none. The controls are so freaking heavy. I uh, have been flying my Wildcat. And when I went to test fly and bring the TBM home, it was the last airplane I flew out of Miami, the museum in Miami. Oh my God, oh my God. I thought the controls had frozen. And I got up there, I started flying around, I realized how heavy they were. Scared the crap out of me because the cockpit's real similar to a Wildcat, you know? But you get up there, oh my, it does not want to turn. Sky Raider, post-World War II. No interest in those. Cool. Okay, continuing to check out Jerry's place here. We got a V1 buzz bomb. I think his is way more complete than mine. Now we got a pseudo World War I airplane there. Kind of a pseudo right, looks like a maybe a, a Vin Fizz that'd be awesome. I'd love to have uh, one of those with a real engine. Some little kids playing, and a bunch of military vehicles. Okay, we are walking along, we are checking us out. We got a Curtis Jenny over there. I love it. We got some volunteers here. I'm a buddy of Jerry's. Okay. Good. Okay. Well, I like your mascot. There. Well, thank you. That's my ostrich friend. That's <laughs> Austin. So thank you. We've got, oh, I think that might have been that, uh, maybe not. Anyway, that was, uh, this might have been that Navy one they made, but it's all like steel tubing. Yeah, this is the one. It's got a freaking six banger Continental on it. Oh my God, this thing weighs a ton. And I got a not so authentic Blario back there. It's got an Anzani on it, but it's got a thick wing on it. Another Fokker D7. That's Ken's old sop with one and a half spreader. That's pretty cool. I'll have to take a picture for Ken and send it to him. That was in the movie Flyboys. Awesome.
pretty cool. Sitting here with Austin at uh, Flying Proms and uh, the Military Aviation Museum with Jerry Yagan. <laughs> Jerry, I gotta yeah, tell you, you are you as frustrated as yeah. I am trying to figure out how to make this pay for itself? You start with a big pile of money and you end up with a small pile of money. Oh my god, so I mean, like this event here, this is a great event. Does this pay for itself? Almost. Almost. That's what I was dealing with. So, I mean, do you understand? Yeah, do you understand why I close? I'm trying to do course, something different. Course, it's course. tough. Yes. And I, I, can't, I don't understand why anybody does it except that we have a passion for airplanes. Yeah. And uh, we were trapped into this early in life, and uh, but it's getting old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As I get older, it's, it's, it's getting old. Yeah, it, it, it's sad, but uh, anyway. I'm going to try something. We'll see if it works. Cool. All right. Good luck yeah. to you. Thanks for doing this, Jerry. All right. Thank Great. you. Bye. Yeah, so I hope you enjoyed, uh, you know, Jerry's little uh, display there. It was pretty cool. As you can see, it's a pretty tough gig to try and figure out how we can make this thing work. And, you know, at some point, I've said it before, when the benevolent uh, benefactor gets tired of paying for the party, the party's over. So I'm trying to figure out a way to make it uh, uh, self-sufficient, uh, self-perpetuating. Uh, so Fantasy of Flight uh, is closed now for a little bit, and we'll see what I can come up with. Uh, keep, uh, keep in track. There's still going to be airplanes. Uh, but uh, it's going to be a little bit different, and it's really uh, not so much about flight and how airplanes fly. It's more about the metaphor of flight of the human spirit and you self-discovering yourself for yourself. Stay tuned.